and it will be short ice age. And everything and everyone, excluding maybe the cockroaches and the algae, will freeze to death in the dark. How close do we get to this? We get close to this several times a year. In 1995, Yeltsin, who was a hardened alcoholic, a bottle of vodka before breakfast, Wernicke's encephalopathy, Korsakoff syndrome. The Americans launched a weather satellite off Norway and they had informed the Kremlin, but the Kremlin lost the data. Fallibility. For the first time ever, they opened the football in Russia. Now, hands up those who know what the football is. Yeah. If you watch the president always walking just behind him is an officer with a suitcase. And the suitcase has the codes to start a nuclear war and the president is never without it. When Reagan was shot, they lost the football for two days. They didn't know where it was. For the first time in the history of the nuclear age, in 95, they opened the football. And there's Yeltsin sitting there with his officers over his shoulders saying, press the button, Mr. President. He had three minutes to decide. Three seconds before that three minutes elapsed, the missile veered off course. And that's why we, you and I, are sitting here and I'm standing in this lecture theatre. And that occurs quite a few times a year. You know the drones they're using to kill people by remote control? It's a place in Nevada where the people sit before consoles and the drones overhead in Afghanistan, they press a button and kill a wedding party. Those people are watching for the first time babies being torn to bits and body parts because when people drop bombs, they fly over and never see it. They're having to have psychological counselling. But viruses have infected their system. Viruses are getting into the system to start a nuclear war. The Chinese are hacking into the systems. Geeks are hacking into the systems. A rising moon once nearly set off the system. A flock of geese, because the, the satellites pick up the shine of the missiles going through space. And I could go on much in much more detail. And we're part of this. It's probably our uranium in their bombs. And we are part of America, and we're allowing the Americans to come in and build more bases to our north so we can fight China with them. Now, you know, we like Americans, and I like them too because I'm there a lot, but you know what tough love is when you've got a relative who you really love who is addicted to alcohol? You say, okay, Dad, I've found your vodka bottles in the umbrella stand. That's it. I'm taking you to a drying out centre. They need to be taken by us to a drying out centre. They need discipline. I like the Americans, but they're kind of gullible and they kind of don't know a lot, except their own country. And we're smart. And why haven't we got the guts that the New Zealanders have had? You know? And it's time we rose up. And I believe that the only people who can really do this are us, because we have absolute credibility as doctors. No one can disagree with what we say because we have to be right on and have all our data at our fingertips. So I came here today really to try and encourage you as a wonderful organisation of doctors, and I think I'm going to join you, um, to, to stand up and, and lead the movement in Australia to stop uranium mining at Ranger, an Olympic dam, and we are about to become the world's radioactive waste dump. Mark my words. That Muckety station almost certainly is going to receive 64,000 tonnes or so of American radioactive waste, a deal done between John Howard and George W. the second. The radioactive waste dump of the world over the Great Artesian Basin. We are in serious, serious trouble, and there is no discussion. So I welcome you to join, or, and I'll join you. I'm not sure how we'll do this, but uh, education's the key and the key is done through the media. And I'll finish by quoting President Jefferson, an informed democracy will behave in a responsible fashion. And it's very easy for us to inform people as we do with our patients. And just know that our planet, our beautiful planet, is in the intensive care unit. And all its systems are in jeopardy, reaching tipping point. Ozone, global warming, the oceans and the rivers, the nuclear power plants, the trees which we're chopping down. Trees trap carbon. It takes a tree 500 years to trap carbon. And we're chop you should go down to Bermagui. They're chopping them down everywhere. Koalas are in trouble. But apart from that, 
The one thing every country agreed upon in Copenhagen was to leave the trees intact. So we've got a lot of work to do. It's all biology. And just know that most of our politicians are biologically and medically illiterate. So it's up to us either to replace them. Karen should probably be Prime Minister. She'd be a good one. <laughs> And it doesn't matter what party she's in. Why don't you infiltrate the, the Liberal Party, you know, and they, th you know. Anyway, someone else did that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we can all do that, but it's time we took over um, because uh, we have to give the planet the same sort of dedication and responsibility we give our patients when we stay up all night with them. We took the Hippocratic Oath. That's why I do the work I do because I'm practicing global preventive medicine. And the nuclear age could induce the end of life on the planet. Nuclear power will induce epidemics of disease for the rest of time that we can't cure and probably never will. But um, thank you very much for having me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, personally and on behalf of the room welcome our newest member of AMA. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, secondly, and uh, I think thank you so much for this presentation. There's a couple of questions I want to ask, and the first one is uh, is the question that I'm often being asked by people when I tell them that you're coming to present at the AMA conference, and that is, what does this mean to our family holidays in Japan? <laughs> they do. It's, I mean, this it gets down to basics. I want to take the kids skiing to Japan. Is that okay? With the next snowfall, will that make it safe to go skiing up in the north of Japan? What they asked me that question. What did you tell them? Uh, I said, Helen said Japan will never be safe to visit, but I want to hear that from you. I, what I, did, I didn't actually finish Fukushima. Uh, there are some, and I've been commissioned to write an article for the International Herald Tribune dash New York Times for the end of the year, a big one, which we syndicate around the world on nuclear power post Fukushima. So three things could occur. There still could be a massive hydrogen explosion underneath those melted cores, and it's called cor corium, the mel molten lava. So if that happens, off it goes. There could be a massive steam explosion as it, it, it melts its way through the concrete floor into the underground water. There could be a massive earthquake which could precipitate one, both, or the collapse of Building 4. It's not over. They don't know how to bring it to a cold shutdown. They're saying it's cold shutdown, but it's not cold shut. They've never had to remove molten fuel like this ever. They can't get to the, uh, Hiroshi uh, the, the um, Chernobyl one because it's melted its way. It's melt through to China Syndrome. It's right through the floor into the earth. So um, I, don't, I can't see this accident ever ending. Nuclear accidents never end anyway because of the, uh, the ground contamination and the contamination of the food for thousands of years. They never end. As for Japan, I wouldn't go near it. My brother, actually, <laughs> he was a diplomat in Japan. He's going to go to Fukushima and interview the people for a book about how they're feeling. Well, number one... <laughs> They're feeling really bad. No, no. <laughs> Number two, they don't even know what's going on. Number three, half the rice grown in Japan is in the Fukushima prefecture, and it's coming in right now being harvested with cesium in it. The tea south of Japan has got cesium in it. The beef's got cesium in it. There's strontium being found in really hot spots in Tokyo. So I would advise nobody to go to Japan, and I would, sus I would say that this is going to be really the end of Japan's predominance in the world, and a new report's just come out from Sweden to show that babies in utero at the time of Chernobyl have a much lower than normal IQ and very inept at mathematical ability because the developing brain is so sensitive. Now, that's a very important study. One, two, Germany did a study, the government, looking at children under the age of five living around 16 reactors, less than 5K and they have more than double the incidence of leukemia and a high incidence of solid cancers. And the closer they live to the reactors, the higher the incidence of malignancy. Now, that's the German government. So this is a... Cl and because reactors continually release carbon-14, tritium I didn't even go into, which is a dangerous isotope, um, um, krypton, xenon, argon, they're called routine emissions, like you've just got a little bit of routine cancer in your breast, don't worry. Um, 
really, it's so dangerous to live around. And, and global warming is antithetical to nuclear power. The oceans are rising. Huge waves and storms are going to come in, which will damage the control rooms. There will be meltdowns. In France, it gets so hot, the rivers fall, so they don't have enough water to cool the reactors. They have to shut them down. And the rivers get so hot, the water's not cool enough a million gallons a minute to cool their reactors. So all in all, the, the situation looks extremely grim. And yet the Australian people are not being taught those a, a modicum of intelligent um, discussion about what the future holds in terms of nuclear. And we're exporting uranium like there's no tomorrow, which there may well not be. That could be a bumper sticker on a car. Or I used to have a bumper sticker which said plutonium is thalidomide forever. But no, I would tell quite definitively your friends who are asking you, do not go to Japan. Um, Helen, is there any way to monitor personally? I mean, are Geiger counters available? Are they accurate? Is there any way we can what empower people? What do you want to people? monitor? Um, gamma, alpha. Um, do you want to monitor if you've been impacted? Or the food, or yeah, particular well, products, um, or particular um, geographical alpha, areas? Alphas don't give off gamma. Um, Geiger counters only measure gamma. So they're measuring the children's thyroids with gamma, but they're not measuring the beta, and it's totally inadequate. So what about things like, um, say, hair mineral testing, where you can look at particular elements? Well, so what are you going to do if you find stuff? Well, at least you can start monitoring where, you know, which the populations are affected. Well, then what? Well, you can't awareness. get the stuff out of people's yeah. bodies. There's nothing you can take to get rid of them. The Americans are ringing me. What food will I give my children? Where will we go? What, what, what can we? What can I give them? What supplements? Nothing. That is a, that's the ghastliness of it. And I think two days after the accident happened, I suddenly got it. I thought, Christ. This is going to go on forever, and it's absolutely irreversible, and like we've descended into Hades. No other industry produces this sort of scenario. No other industry. Thanks for listening today. This is If You Love This Planet. You've just heard a lecture by Dr. Helen Caldicott, the presenter of this program, given to the International Integrative Medical Conference held in Sydney on the 16th of October 2011. Don't hesitate to go to our website to hear this lecture again or any of our other programs. That's ifyoulovethisplanet.org. Hope you can join us next week.